Most people though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Mm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm. So it's easier to turn on your TV, it's easier to, mm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself mm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and Good. you're stepping into the unknown, okay. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire? If you believe that you're creating your life, and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Mm. So if you can, get ready. Because something weird or unusual, some synchronicity, some coincidence, some opportunity is going to land in your lap. And you're going to have to go and get it. Everything starts with a thought. I mean, everything that you do in your life, you, you have to have a thought before you initiate an action, right? So, mm -hmm. so if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, like any great leader in history understands that, uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to decide, are you going to be defined by a vision of the future mm -hmm. or are you going to live by the memories of the past? Mm -hmm. Most people wake up in the morning and your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything you've learned and experienced to this moment, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a memory bank. So most people wake up in the morning and they start thinking about their problems and those problems are connected to certain people and things at certain times and places. And the moment they start, start turning on those circuits, those memories are actually causing them to think mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those memories has an emotion associated with them, and emotions are the end product of past experiences. So then, the moment they recall the event or they, the, they recall some problem in their life, they start feeling unhappy, they start feeling discouraged, they start feeling anxious. Now, thoughts are the uh, language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body, and how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So we could say then, hmm. Most people's entire state of being when they start their day is in the familiar past. Well, if you live in the familiar past, then it makes sense you're gonna create the predictable future. Mm. So what happens for most people is they get stuck in their biology. So think about this. Mm. Your body is your unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between an experience in your life that creates an emotion and an emotion that you can create by thought alone. So if you're living by the same emotion every single day and those emotions are influencing your thoughts and you can't think greater than how you feel or feelings have become the means of thinking, you're thinking in the past. Your lens of the future is going to be colored by the past so you can't see possibilities. So most people like to wait for crisis or disease or diagnosis before they wake up yes. enough to see. Well, the challenge is, is that biology tends to be redundant. So if you keep thinking the same thoughts and those thoughts be begin to fire certain circuits in your brain, the nerve cells that fire together wire together. So all of a sudden you start getting hardwired. And those are the thoughts that you can think the easiest. Mm -hmm. At the same time, those thoughts produce chemicals called emotions. And the next thing you know, your body gets accustomed to living by the same emotions. And it could be guilt. It could be unhappiness. It could be pain. But at least it's familiar to you. At least you can predict it. So mm -hmm. some people would rather cling to the familiar than take a chance in possibility. So for most people then they say, well, I don't really see how my thoughts have anything to do with my destiny. Well, that's because 95% of those thoughts are subconscious programs, right? So you're not even conscious that you think those thoughts. So mm -hmm. the first step to change is starting to think about what you've been thinking about yes. and change it. And, and then when you begin to observe those thoughts, you're no longer the program, you're the consciousness. So, so, the, so most people though, when, they, when you do that, when you decide to really take a look, it's like lighting a match in a dark place. Mm. So you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to turn on your TV, it's easier to, mm. to play with your cell phone, to distract yourself mm -hmm. from those feelings. Well, when you understand that change really requires becoming uncomfortable to a certain degree, and that's normal, that you're yeah. leaving the known and Good. you're stepping into the unknown, okay. then it begs the question, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? Because your attention on those thoughts begins to re reorganize circuitry, re remold the brain because most people are waiting for their life to change so they can feel gratitude, to feel abundance, to mm -hmm. feel whole. You know, that's the old model of cause and effect, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you're living with emptiness, you're living with lack, you're living with pain, most people have been conditioned that something out there has to take away this emptiness or feeling inside of them. But if you believe that you're creating your life and you're living by lack, well, lack isn't going to create abundance, right? Mm. So. 
much. So then it makes sense then that you don't really actually create wealth, you generate wealth, you oh, generate wow. abundance. So the moment you start teaching your body emotionally what that future is going to feel like before it's made manifest, well your body is the unconscious mind, mm. believes it's living in that future in the present moment. Now, it's a scientific fact that it's the environment that signals the gene, okay? Mm -hmm. The end product from an experience in the environment is an emotion. So when you begin to embrace an elevated emotion, you're beginning to signal the gene ahead of the environment. What's the importance of that? Well, genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and the function of your body. Hmm. And the expression of proteins is the expression of life. So by you creating an elevated emotion and teaching your body what that future will feel like before it's made manifest, your body's starting to live in that future reality in the present moment. Now here's the key. If you were able to become familiar with gratitude, become familiar with wholeness, become familiar with abundance, to become familiar with freedom, mm -hmm. and you're able to generate those chemicals every single day, more than likely you would be walking around feeling like your future has already happened and you would no longer be looking for it to happen. You would already feel like it has happened. Now, what is the importance of that? Well, you're literally becoming somebody else. Yes. So you're leaving your lack, you're leaving your guilt, you're leaving your emptiness behind. So your personality, literally Ed, is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is your personality, and your personality is intimately connected to your personal reality, your life. Mm -hmm. So then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, you got to change your personality. And mm -hmm. here we go again. you got to start becoming conscious of your unconscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. you got to start noticing how you act, how you speak. You gotta pay attention to how you're feeling. Some people would live in guilt their whole entire life and don't even know it's guilt because at least it feels like them. So then when you start doing that, you begin to objectify your subjective self. So, so then when you begin to make small changes back to thought, yeah. a new thought should lead to a new choice. Mm. A new choice should lead to a new behavior. A new behavior should create a new experience and a new experience should create a new emotion. Yes. And that new emotion is teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood. Now your body is embodying the truth, right? Mm. So then the new emotion should inspire new thoughts and that's called evolution. So how do we get stuck? It's really simple. The stronger the, the emotion you feel from some event in your life, be it a betrayal or a trauma or whatever, yes. the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you pay attention to the cause outside of you. So the brain takes a snapshot. It freezes an image and embosses that pattern neurologically in the brain. That's called a memory. Mm. So we create long-term memories from strong emotional events. Okay? okay. So some certain people have a strong experience in their life mm -hmm. and it catches all of the brain's attention. So now they think neurologically within the circuits of the past experience mm. and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. And so how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. Now here's the problem that if you don't know how to mediate or control your emotional reaction to that event and you keep that refractory period of chemicals going on yes. for extended periods of time so that the event produces a chemical change and the body needs to return back to homeostasis or balance mm -hmm. but if it can't then the elongation of that emotional reaction for weeks say for days or weeks is called a mood so you say Ed what's wrong with you I'm in a mood why are you in a mood well this thing happened to me five days ago and I'm having one long emotional reaction so then what you do is you keep telling the story about it keep firing and wiring the same circuits and you keep conditioning the body into the past so then you wake up in the morning and you look for the emotion so then now all of a sudden you keep it lingering for, for, for weeks or months, that's called the temperament. Well, why is he so angry? I don't know, let's ask him. Why are you so angry? Well, this thing happened to me eight months ago. I'm having one long emotional reaction. I'm memorizing my emotions. You keep it going on for years on end, it's called a personality trait. So then a person then is memorizing themselves by living in the past. And so then you say to them, well, well tell me the story. Now, the latest research on memory says that 50% of what we talk about in our past isn't even the truth. So we make stuff up about the past. In other words, people are reliving a life that they didn't even have just to reaffirm that they can't change, right? So then what's the significance of this? Where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So then the stronger the emotion that you have to some problem or condition or person in your life, 
the more you're paying attention to them. So they captured your attention. So you're giving your power away to that person, right? Because they're capturing your attention. Wow. So then there's an energetic connection to every person, everything, everything in your past, present reality has your energy connected to it. So now, mm -hmm. this is the significance. When a person really decides to be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memory of the past, the hardest part about it is all of a sudden becoming conscious and not making the same unconscious yes. choice. Mm -hmm. So then, if you lower the volume to your frustration, to your hatred, mm -hmm. to your anger, if you truly knew how to do that, if you lowered the volume to that emotion, you would take your attention off that person, which means you would begin to break those energetic bonds and now you're taking your power back. You're calling energy back to you and we've measured this and all of a sudden it builds this bigger electromagnetic field around the person's body. That's energy to heal. That's energy to create a new future with, right? And then if you didn't want to lower the volume to the emotion, then just take your attention off the person. And every time you take your attention off the person, if you became conscious of that, you wouldn't feel the emotion. Mm. Now the body though, has been addicted to that emotion right. because you're using that person yes. to reaffirm your addiction to hatred or frustration. Mm -hmm. And if that person died, you'd find another one. Mm -hmm. So then here you go now. So now you're in a position now where you begin to lower the volume to that emotion and the body's going, wait a second, you've been, you've been doing this for the last 20 years and all of a sudden you're just going to stop hating? And the body says, well, I've been conditioned this way and conditioning is based on the past. So when the body feels the, the lack of that emotion, just like a drug addict, it says, hey, uh, you're off schedule here. So now the body starts influencing the mind to think about experiences that are embossed in the brain that are based on that emotion. So the emotion now is causing you to think in the past. If we teach a person then how to trade that frustration or that hatred for an elevated emotion, and they'll say, yeah, but you know, it was my ex's fault or I got betrayed by my partner in business. Yeah, 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 we know that. Okay, so let's take your partner in business or take your ex, let's duct tape him, put him in a cannon and shoot him to the moon. Now what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you gotta reckon with yourself and change, mm -hmm. right? So then teach a person then how to trade that emotion for an elevated emotion. Now, you're gonna give that up and you're gonna practice feeling gratitude for, as an example. Yes. And the person says, well, I can't feel gratitude. And I say, I, absolutely you can, because you don't practice feeling it. You practice spending most of your time feeling hatred and frustration. Mm. So now it's gonna take a little time to cause that heart of you to bloom, or, or your mm. heart of yours to bloom. Once they're able to feel even the smallest measure of gratitude, where they start feeling appreciation, thankfulness, Gratitude, it's emotional signature. When you, when you get something, mm -hmm. uh, when you're receiving something, when something has happened to you, uh, or when something is happening to you, you say thank you because you're receiving something. So the emotional signature of gratitude means the event has already happened where it's happening to you. So the moment you open your heart and you feel gratitude, well, that emotion then is telling the body that the experience has already occurred. And the thought then can make it into the body because it's consistent. So now you're beginning to program the autonomic nervous system into a very specific destiny. Mm. You gotta maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day, mm. independent of the conditions in your outer environment. Mm independent of your body's cravings of those emotions and habituations and independent from time. Mm -hmm. And if you can, get ready. Because something weird or unusual, some synchronicity, some coincidence, some mm -hmm. opportunity is gonna land in your lap and you didn't have to go and get it.